Ehang 184 is actually an electric powered quadcopter which can carry up to 100 kilograms of weight. The vehicle itself weighs approximately 200 kilograms. It's 4.9 feet tall and it's capable of carrying one person and a small luggage for 23 minutes. The drone can develop up to 62 miles per hour and, according to the company, its range of transport is 10 miles. passenger isn't expected to fly the drone, all he should do is enter the flight plan via the specially designed application. There are only two commands that person in the cockpit can issue. One is for taking off and the other is for landing. All done by a single click. Ehang 184 calculates the course and avoids obstacles it comes across, while the passenger enjoys the flight in a cabin, which is air conditioned for the passenger's comfort. The drone has eight propellers and four arms and the beauty of it is that it can fit into one parking spot. Dubai's Road and Transportation Agency plans to launch trips with the first fully electric autonomous aerial vehicle drone starting this July. The Prime Minister of the UAE wants 25% of all passenger trips to be made in driverless vehicles by 2030. This human-sized drone, Ehang 184, is made in China and is already flown in Dubai. Its manufacturer, Chinese drone company, showed off the Ehang 184 at CES in Las Vegas after 100 successful manned test flights. For decades, LA has been home to two thriving communities of builders, the people who design cars and the people who build spaceships. Many of them work in polished studios and massive industrial buildings. But the man I'm looking for works in a place like this. Taja, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you, man. Good to see you, too. <laughs> this is Deja Molnar, and this is where he keeps his toys. So when we're driving slow, we keep the uh, landing gear down. And then once we hit the freeway and we're in second gear, I'll bring the wheels up. So don't freak out when you hear that sound. <laughs> Deja used to fly planes in the Air Force. Then he built rockets and rocket-powered cars. He's been in some bands. He's been rich. He's been poor. He's a free spirit who does whatever he wants. Like a lot of Angelinos, Deja often finds himself stuck for hours on the freeway, wishing there was a way to rise up and escape from the concrete prison. This is my first attempt at a flying car. The flying car as, as a, uh, a development has often been mired in the idea that you have to make something for everybody and that you have to dumb it down so that it's a consumer product to cut a few seconds off of somebody's commute. I don't have the objective about creating ubiquity. Da Vinci did one copy of the Mona Lisa and it wasn't for everybody and it wasn't like you had to make 500 of them, but it still has value. And I see a lot of the machines that have been made as art pieces. And I think what they need is a gallery right now to help drive the interest in the development. To drum up that interest, Deser soon plans to start a flying car racing league in the Mojave Desert. 
There's a long-standing marriage between L.A. and the Mojave. It's in L.A. where engineers go about their day jobs in fancy offices. And it's in the Mojave where the folks who can never stop experimenting go to try out their ideas on the weekends. Mojave is sort of what? It's like the, the playground for the test bed. And it's about the people you want to meet as opposed to the people that you don't need. It's, those are the freaks, you know, that, that matter <laughs> to me, are the ones that want to go out there and take their 300 mile an hour jet car out on a Saturday afternoon yeah. or whatever. All right, I'll see you with the freaks. Okay. <laughs> and we'll, 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 you can join the club. <laughs> Mojave is about a two-hour drive into the California desert from Los Angeles. And most of that time is spent staring at bumpers. God, this traffic sucks! You deal with this, and yes, a flying car seems like a great idea. But as we made our way out into the Inventor Badlands, the reality of zipping across the desert in a loose assembly of metal pipes and good intentions felt somewhere between stupid and terrifying. The truth, though, is that much of this technology is tried and true. The first part of Dezger's flying car plan hinges on this gyrocopter. These types of vehicles have been flying since the 1920s. They're cheap, relatively easy to build, and pretty reliable. Instead of running on a motor, the propeller gets its lift from the wind as the craft goes forward. Incredible, man. It's crazy. You just get, like, this totally different perspective. If the engine cuts out, the copter would just flutter down to the ground, like a leaf falling out of a tree. My adrenaline was pumping right before we took off, but uh -huh. you know, like the second we were in the air, I mean, you just- Yeah, uh, there's you, a lot to see, and it's pretty here. And... Sort of forget about it all, yeah. And as you saw, I mean, obviously there's, we can land anywhere out here, yeah. so it's a perfect place. The gyrocopter takes care of the up part of the flying car puzzle. But you still need something to deal with the roads. For that, Desert has this slick concept vehicle. The goal is to marry the two and have something that turns just about any road into a runway. When that happens, okay, if that happens, the select few willing to give it a go will taste freedom, while the rest of us rot on the 405. I think that the reality is that a lot of people in this world like to have some kind of an advantage in life, no matter what they're doing, whether it's a bigger stereo or a, uh, you know, a swimming pool at their house. But the reality is that in nature, all birds can walk, all bugs that fly have legs, and they can fold their wings up on their back. They survive in different environments because they've adapted to get through them. To say that we're gonna spend 40 billion hours a year in the United States sitting in traffic, saying that, well, no one will ever have one of these, I don't really care if that's the party line. you can make something that will allow you to escape this ridiculous ant line of eternity. 